Welcome back to Metal Magic. Today we're going to set some rivets the old fashioned way. We're going to drive them. Hi, I'm Paul Dye, and today I want to show you the basic technique for setting rivets using an actual rivet gun and a bucking bar. Now, rivet guns come in different sizes, 1X, 2X, and 3X. You can build most small airplanes with a 2X gun. You can do it with a 3X gun. Some rivets might be hard to drive with a 1X, but use what you got, use what you can find. Um, you're going to end up with a variety of rivet sets. The rivet set sits in here in the end. Today we're going to show you how to set a rivet with a round head on it, standard rivets. And so we have a rivet set which has a little dimple in it, which fits perfectly on that head. Bucking bars are another matter. Bucking bars come in all different shapes, sizes, and materials. Many people today are buying tungsten bucking bars because it's a very, very dense metal. You get a lot of weight in a very compact package. This is very, very heavy. Um, and it gives you a lot of nice surfaces to work with to get around flanges and things like that. So we'll use this bucking bar, but there are as many bucking bar shapes as you can imagine. Um, and sometimes you'll actually use tools which don't even look like bucking bars, like large screwdrivers to, to, to buck the rivets. So the, bu the, the, the bucking bar goes on the tail of the rivet and the, the gun is going to go on the shop or on the factory head to form the, uh, the shop head. So we'll go ahead and set this up here, get ready to, to drive. You want to have your pressure turned down with one of these for, a, for an 84 rivet to maybe about 30 psi. Any more than that, it's really going to blow things out. You're going to knock holes and stuff. So you're going to want to turn your, your compressor way down or have an on, on uh, gun uh, regulator or valve which helps you with that. And you're going to use short bursts. We're not going not to go for very long to drive this rivet. This is a pretty short rivet. Um, so let's give one a try. Now, one thing to remember when you're using a rivet gun is they are noisy. This is not something you're going to want to do in a one-bedroom apartment with neighbors on both sides. Because they're noisy, we're going to put on hearing protection. And just like that, we've set a perfect rivet. We'll check and make sure that our gauge doesn't go over it and that the height is good. We're good. That's a round head rivet. We're going to set a few more. So setting a rivet looks kind of simple, and, and it is if you do it right. But if you have the wrong length rivet or you're not holding the, the, uh, the bucking bar square, you can make a real mess of rivets. There are a couple of different common mistakes that people make. One is, as I said, not holding the, the bucking bar square on the tail, in which case you end up with a tilted head. If you've got the wrong length rivet, if it's too long, you can actually clinch the rivet over. In other words, instead of setting it and expanding the head nice and straight, you end up bending it over, and that makes a mess. You can't live with it that way. Um, another thing that can happen, if you don't keep the rivet gun firmly planted onto the head, it will skip. It'll, it'll, in, in slow motion, it'll move to the side, it'll jump back on, and it'll create what we call a smiley. It'll make a little smile uh, groove in the, uh, in the head. A very, very minor smiley you might get away with in a line of rivets, but when you really smash that head and it's no longer a nice dome, you're going to be drilling it out and starting over. All right. So the, 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 the last thing you might make a mistake with is if your rivet is too short, you're going to end up with a very, very flat head, might not even expand to the proper diameter, and then you're going to have to start over again, drill it out. So always make sure that you've got your, your uh, rivet set or the, the selected so that it's got about one and a half diameters sticking out the back side and you'll get a really nice head if you keep your bucking bar square. Um, you almost have to do some bucking in order to really understand how it works. It's one of those things that once you've done it, it makes sense. Until you've done it, you're not quite sure what it is. So keep the, the rivet gun firmly planted and let the bucking bar do the work. It'll actually, if, if we could do this in slow motion, it would actually be bouncing on and you're, you're, you're pushing it in and that's going to actually hammer that rivet head into shape.
Driving rivets well is a matter of practice. Keep doing it and you'll just get better at it. So, thanks again to Aircraft Spruce for sponsoring the series and thanks for watching. If I don't set this pressure up right, we're screwed. Hole drilled in the side of the Cleco. Yep, that happens. <laughs>